Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and some first impressions of the latest games releasing. As always, I'm Jake Baldino, and today I'm talking about I Am Setsuna. This is a PC, PlayStation 4, Square Enix JRPG from newcomer developers Tokyo RPG Factory. This game is kind of basically a giant love letter to Super Nintendo and early PlayStation JRPGs. It's very, very evocative of Chrono Trigger in many, many ways, and I think that's both a good thing and a bad thing. Right from the outset, the game manages to feel incredibly familiar. The main character's color tones remind you of Chrono, and there's airships, and most character types really feel feel like Final Fantasy tropes. Not to mention the game even has a swordsman character that looks just like Orin from Final Fantasy X. The game teeters on this precipice of homage and celebration, and kind of almost veers into feeling like a derivative copy, but I, I think it's really down to you guys here. I think it's gonna depend on the individual fan playing the game to really see how you feel about that. But the actual game here is totally a classic JRPG through and through. You know, you'll read dialogue, explore local villages, go through dungeons, forests, and caves, walk across world maps, manage your party, and engage in ATB, or active time battle combat. The ATB combat is good, and it's Pretty familiar. Each character can use techs, which are basically their version of magic abilities, and there's also this mechanic involving using abilities together with your party for an added bonus effect when all ATB gauges are full. And then of course there's the other standard stuff, equipping each character with items to add to those abilities and stats, and then there's also weapon loot and weapon upgrading. I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys, the majority of the ATB system here feels exactly like Chrono Trigger. There's the I Am Sets in a layer of additions here, but the actual core is straight up Chrono Trigger, and that was actually intended by the developers. It's a kind of simple but fun combat system, and I was actually pleasantly surprised when it got pretty challenging in a lot of situations. Town exploration is relatively simple and honestly maybe leaving a bit to be desired. There's some NPC interactions, treasure chests and merchants. There's not really an in type of mechanic, which I found kind of disappointing, and it's sorely missed. There is some very light side questing thing here and there, with exploring different islands, but there's not really much to write home about. And speaking of the lack of the in mechanic I just mentioned, you can save at save points, but they are very far and few between. You can also save in the overworld map, because the game does not autosave, and I gotta admit, it's pretty awesome most of the time. Except for a large hump in the beginning tutorial of the game, where the tutorial basically concludes with a very challenging enemy, and if you die, you get pushed back very far, because chances are you forgot your save, and that's really gonna annoy some JRPG newcomers. But otherwise, the systems work really well, and I always find it refreshing to play a game that doesn't hold your hand. It's nice. They really took the throwback to the 90s seriously, and I appreciate that. I'd say the real high point here is the story. It tells this tale of a girl named Setsuna who must sacrifice herself in an annual sacrificial pilgrimage of sorts in order to free the world from monsters, and it's up to her and her loyal band of protectors to see her mission through. Yeah, does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's totally Final Fantasy X. But on the flip side, characters here are what makes things great. Sure, you know, they're kind of the archetypes you commonly see in other JRPGs, but they're all endearing enough characters, they're well written, and the game has a great way of articulating gentle and emotional moments. I was very surprised with how tonally well done some moments of levities were. The only downside to all of this here is that the main protagonist is a completely forgettable, generic, <laughs> lifeless character. His look doesn't even really quite fit in, he looks like a badass ninja. But thankfully, he gives way to highlight the other great characters moments, and I think that's where it ultimately works. This is a very sad tale that has a lot to do with death and your destiny and what you're supposed to do with your life, but it all handles it very well and it never gets too down. The game also looks and sounds pretty amazing. The three-dimensional overhead view is perfect with a bunch of different details and particle effects, like snow actually moving around and leaves rustling, And but here the sound is easily the most unique part of the entire game. The majority of the music here is composed almost entirely on a single piano, and it gives the game like this really quirky, interesting, almost junior your high school play sound to everything. 